chronicling the lives of women involved in the legislative arena. The Women of the Oklahoma Legislature Oral History Project captures and records information about women who have served in the Oklahoma Legislature in their own voices. An effort of the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at the OSU Library, the collection comprises 46 interviews with women who served in different decades, illustrating changes and similarities through the years. In 2008, then-Congresswoman, now Governor of Oklahoma, Mary Fallon, sat down for an interview. She highlights her early interest in politics and how running for the Oklahoma House of Representatives in 1990 came about. Gosh, I got interested in politics probably in high school. When I was uh, a senior in high school, I was asked to be a page in the Oklahoma legislature by our local representative, who at that time it was James Townsend, Jim Townsend from Shawnee, Oklahoma. He was good friends with my mother and my father. And I had the opportunity to go to the Oklahoma Capitol and serve as a page. And just kind of found it very intriguing. And I, I liked uh, being around the political side and the issues as a page. And of course, as a very young girl, and coming from Tecumseh, going to Oklahoma City to the state capitol was a really big deal for me. And later on, as I continued into my college years. I went to Oklahoma Baptist University my first two years and then transferred to Oklahoma State University, which is where I graduated with a degree in, in a now human environmental sciences, family relations and child development. And during my years in college, my father, Newton Copeland, ran to be mayor of Tecumseh okay. and actually lost his first election as mayor and then was elected mayor of Tecumseh during my time at OSU and served uh, in office until I was 28, and then he passed away at the early age of, I think it was around 56 when he passed away, and I was 28 at the time. And my mother, who was a non-elected official, was asked by the Tecumseh um, um, community and, and, the, and the city council to actually step up to be the mayor as a non-elected official, which is highly unusual in politics, because normally a vice mayor or someone on the city council would step into that open slot upon a death. But as a non-elected official, my mother became the mayor of Tecumseh and the first woman to serve in office. And so I, I became very interested in politics from my time in high school as a page in the Oklahoma legislature to the time I was in my late 20s and my mother and my father both served in community service as the mayors of Tecumseh, Oklahoma. I ran for the Oklahoma Legislature in 1990. I was uh, in my early 30s. I was a businesswoman in Oklahoma City. I was a district manager for Lexington Hotel Suites statewide. Had a great career. I just uh, received the District Manager of the Year nationwide for reducing the expenses of the hotel corporation I worked for, but yet increasing the profits and just basically good sales and marketing and management. And only been on the job a, a short period of time, that particular job. And a seat came open in our Oklahoma legislature that belonged to a fellow OSUer, uh, Mike Hunter, and his wife, Cheryl Hunter, which was Cheryl Plaxico Hunter, was actually one of my sorority sisters at Oklahoma State University. And he decided he wasn't going to run for the legislative seat that he held. And when the seat came open at that uh, December and he said he wasn't going to run again, I called Mike Hunter up and I said, Mike, if you're not going to run again for the legislature, I am, because I am so mad at what's going on at the Capitol, and um, I want to get out there and improve education, health care, improve the business environment, and work on all these crime issues. And he said, well, you know, go right ahead. And of course, there were several other people that also ran for that seat. And unbeknownst to me, unbeknown to me, I should say, that during that same time period, which was in December, and the election was next year in August and then for the primary and then November for the uh, general election, I, I announced in, in December and uh, still worked my job full time. I had my daughter who was three. I was doing a lot of volunteer work in the community and uh, starting to campaign nights and weekends because that was when I announced for my election was in December around Christmas time. And in January I had the flu, February I had the flu, and um, actually didn't know that I was expecting my second child. Oh, gosh. It was a wonderful surprise, a nice surprise, but my husband and I hadn't quite planned on that specific timing. 
and uh, actually had my, my son between the primary election and the general. And so on election night in August, I was actually eight months pregnant, and uh, my party had someone that ran against me or on the Republican side because I was just this young woman who was pregnant running for office and she would never be effective and wouldn't be able to do the job. And actually it was pretty rough because they pretty much campaigned against me as a young mother and they said I'd never get anything done, I would be ineffective, wouldn't win my election. And uh, I had my son, uh, the election night was in, in August and I won that election against the Republican opponent, had my son 30 days later on September 27th and then I had one month and one week to go campaign against my Democrat opponent and uh, won that election. And when I won my election, I had a month and a half old baby and a three-year-old. And that is how I started my whole political career in, in politics. And just to prove those people wrong, my first uh, four years in office, my only four years in the Oklahoma legislature, I passed 16 bills into law. And there were only three Republican women out of 101 members in the House and only 30-something members to begin with, so we did not have the majority to even pass legislation, but mm -hmm. I just believed in building consensus, selling people on why it was important to the state of Oklahoma, and then working across both sides of the aisle, because you had to, to get anything done, and uh, had a great four years at the state capitol, and started out with the, I was probably the only, well, I know I was the only one that had a brand new baby and a three-year-old working at the capitol. You can view the Women of the Oklahoma Legislature Oral History Project online by visiting www.library.okstate.edu slash oral history slash W-O-T-O-L.